Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. This is Ahmed Salim recording for the Daily Reminder. When Rasulullah sallam one day after praying Zuhur Salah, he takes a Sahabi with him, Abu Huraira, and he tells him, let's go for a walk. The Sahabi, he goes with Rasulullah sallam and they go out all the way to the village or the, 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 the community, the suburbs of the Jewish tribes. Past those Jewish tribe sub suburbs, you're talking about by the mountain of Uhud, Rasulullah comes to a door, he knocks at that door, and he stays outside and he says the following words. He's like, Athamma luka'u, Athamma luka'u, Athamma luka'u. Where is my loved one? Where is my loved one? Where is my loved one? Luka actually means a piece of your heart. And then Rasulullah sits with Abu Huraira outside of the house. Now Abu Huraira is all seeing all of this, and it's quite strange that Rasulullah has walked this far, knocks at the house, didn't even enter and just asked for something. Then what happens is, moments later, Hassan radiallahu anh, he jumps out of the house and he sees his grandfather in front and he starts running towards Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa At that point, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa recognizes that you know, his height is a little bit higher than the child coming. So he lowers his body down onto the floor so that he could be at the level of Hassan and he opens his arms and Hassan radiallahu anh, he jumps into a hug of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Rasulullah sallallahu he hugs him and he starts kissing him, smelling him, smelling his hair. Abu, Abu Huraira radiallahu anh, he's watching and then Rasulullah says, and Ya Allah love, I love him, so you love him and love the one whoever loves him, meaning love the person who loves Hassan radiallahu Now this is a very small story, short story. Most of you probably heard of this story. But what are some of the lessons for us in this story? First and foremost, think about the obedience that Abu Huraira shows towards Rasulullah And this is the obedience of Sahaba radiallahu anh. That on an extremely hot day, Rasulullah tells Abu Huraira, let's go. And he doesn't even tell him where we're going. And Abu Huraira doesn't tell to, turns to Rasulullah and he says, Ya Rasulullah, but can you tell me uh, where are we going? Uh, what are we, like, what's, the, what's the plan? Have you ever been in a car when you're lost and you know, both of you are lost and you're driving and you have absolutely no idea where you're going, you're looking for a restaurant and then one of you eventually says, stop, let's make a decision of where we have to eat first so that you know, so it, it kind of gets to your nerves. But then you see Abu Hurair radiallahu anh, he kind of walked almost seven to eight kilometers from Masjid al Nabawi all the way to the area we're talking about. That's a good seven, eight kilometer walk on an extremely hot day, right at the zenith, like it right when the sun is on your head. And they didn't have air-conditioned cars, they didn't have umbrellas. Total obedience to Rasulullah The question I want you to ask ourselves is, you know, how many times do we come across a hadith uh, that kind of sits in wrong with what we believe or what, what the society is doing? And how many times do we have that courage to say, this is the hadith of Rasulullah and I know this hadith is to be true, I'm going to submit to it. It's, it's a difficult thing to do. Second thing we find is Rasulullah he knocked at the door, and he made it very clear to Fatima radiallahu anha that I'm not here to visit you, I'm here to visit my grandson. I'm here to visit my grandson. Now, in effect, what is he saying? If, if the grandfather shows reverence, love towards a grandchild, you automatically are giving a symbol to your children, to, your, to the mother and father of that child, that I, I really care about your children, i.e. I also care about you very much. And that's why Fatima radiallahu anha, she didn't have any objections to it. I want to ask a question. Grandparents, grandfathers who are going to be listening to these videos or soon to be grandparents and grandfathers. When was the last time, you know, you took out time from your retired life or you took out time on your weekend and you just, you know, went up to your husband, uh, your son or daughter and you told them, listen, uh, send my child out. I'm just going to take him for an ice cream. See, these bonds are very important in the Muslim community and we need to really work on that. Third point I want you to look at is Fatima radiallahu anha, it's mentioned in one of the other narrations that as soon as he heard that Rasulullah, she heard that Rasulullah has come to take Hassan radiallahu anh, she held him, she washed him, changed his clothes, and even in one of the narrations he said that she she made Hassan radiallahu anh wear a necklace of qurunful, cloves. You know, they're like in Arabic they call them ismar, clove, in Urdu they call it long, that small thing. So they, even till this day, Arabs wear this because it has that fragrance and it has other benefits that they believe that it has. So that Fatima radiallahu anha, she took the time to prepare the child. What is she? What is the message that the child gets away saying? 
that listen i'm about to meet my grandfather and the mother's like wait 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 you got to get ready for him it's your grandfather you got to show respect to him see often times we think oh our child is not respecting us respect is not something you can feed into the child you need to be that role model as parents that you are respecting your parents i.e. your children will also learn that respect from you but if you're not doing that then don't expect that your child is going to respect you next lesson rasulullah sallam he looks up and he makes that dua that i you know i love hasan radiyallahu anhu and at that point abu huraira he says by allah from that day on there has been no one that is more beloved to me in my eyes after rasulullah sallam than hasan radiyallahu and that should be the case for us all this the fitna that is around hasan and husain and stuff like that we need to realize that they were grandsons of they were ahlul bayt grandsons of nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam and we really need to love them hopefully we all benefited with this this ahmed salim signing off subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik